Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, the show that is part of the Simply Luxurious Life online destination, cultivating true contentment, the art of living a life of quality over quantity. Visit the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life, at our simplified URL, tsll.co, or thesimplyluxuriouslife.com to find the show notes for each podcast episode, as well as much more weekly content to elevate your everyday and deepen your contentment. From a Monday motivational post, recipes, videos of the cooking show series, style and decor inspiration, French and British inspired content, and reader's favorite regular weekly post, This and That, which is posted each Friday morning. Now to today's episode. Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 328th episode of the Simple Sophisticate. Today, we are going to Paris because, well, we haven't gone to Paris for a very long time on this show, and I'm so excited to have the opportunity to have just spent some time there and wanted to share with you 16 ideas to savor Paris. But before we get to that list, this week's Petit Plaisir is also inspired by time in Paris. And it's a recipe that you can make in fewer than 10 minutes and slip away to a terrace in Paris, imagining the world walking by, soaking in the sun, or listening to the rain gently fall. All with the simple making of a recipe that requires fewer than five ingredients. We'll chat about that at the end of the show. But first, yep, getting back to Paris was... As I've told some of my friends, it was life lifting, it was reassuring, it was comforting, it was all of those positive feel good vibes and it was also a stretching of a muscle that has not been worked out for almost three years and yes, it was an opportunity, it was a privilege, it was something that I feel fortunate to have had the opportunity to do. With that said, French Week is still four months away. So I didn't want to wait to share this episode until August. Now, as many of you know, British Week is right around the corner in fewer than three weeks, in fact. And I have so much content for British Week. But I'm going to be sprinkling the fines of Paris because I just stayed in Paris on this trip before we've hopped over the channel and went to England. I'm going to be sprinkling the Paris posts and episodes over the course of the next four months leading up to French week because I can't wait. And I know you can't either. I know you've been wanting to hear and read and be inspired. And some of you I know are planning trips to head over there soon. So let's get right into today's episode. 15 ideas to savor Paris. Now I was there only for a couple of days But a dream was realized when this happened, to experience being in Paris in April. And that is what we were able to do just for a couple of days, but it was just enough. It was so much more than enough. It was, I still can't believe I was there, to be honest with you. And granted, this is not a rare dream. Many people have this dream to be in Paris in the spring. And since this was the first spring since 2019, as the past two years, travelers were not able to visit the City of Light. The crowds were very abundant, but I did not mind a bit. It almost felt as though there was new oxygen, there was new you know, energy in the city that we were just so excited to be able to be there. You could just feel that positive and appreciation, I guess, is more like it. You can feel the appreciation for being able to be there in this beautiful city on these beautiful days. And that's part of why I think it was so busy. These were the first days that the city 
had had beautiful blue skies, only a few clouds, and the temperatures reaching 71 the first day, 70 the second day, and it just kept being a beautiful week there, um, even after we left. And they've had snow the previous week and a lot of rain, and I love rain. Y'all know I love rain. I wouldn't have minded that a bit, but I think the good weather... And following just a few weeks prior to that, the lifting of many regulations in the city invited so many Europeans to come and spend some time in city. As well, it was Easter, the Easter holiday, and so many people had that week off, or a few days at the very least. All right, we arrived on April 13th, which was a Wednesday, and we left on the 16th that Saturday. 15 ideas for savoring Paris and doing so fully, no matter how short your trip may be. As I've written about in my first book and referred to in my third book, The Road to La Papillon, the Paris syndrome is real. So this feeling of having such high expectations, if you've never visited Paris before, based on so many other sources, and when you get there, you're complete. First of all, I think part of it's culture shock. If if it's a culture um, or a language you're not used to hearing or don't know, but there's such a high expectation that it doesn't meet up with the reality. Everyone experiences it differently if it happens, but there's a huge letdown. But the thing is, Paris is a living, breathing city, but it really does have a magic that's hard to describe. You feel it unconsciously when you're there, at least I do. I feel it unconsciously. And every time I return, I feel it more consciously. It's for me, when I return home, that I see or notice that it was magical, more so. I'm more conscious of it because it is such a special place. So while we need to be aware of the Paris syndrome, we also, once we are aware of that, possibility, we're able to savor whatever time we have there so much more fully. Now, admittedly, as many of you know, I thoroughly enjoy the French countryside. I've been down south in Provence. I've been up north in Normandy. I've been out west in the Loire Valley. And there's so many other places I want to go. But what I have decided and, and have chosen to do is is to appreciate and utilize my time in Paris for punctuating my visits as my trips will begin there, and then as I conclude them before I either head to the airport at Charles de Gaulle or head across the channel or in the channel to go to London on the Eurostar. And I like this because it gives me two or three or maybe just a day on each end to just soak up opportunities to explore exhibits, try new and different restaurants, step inside places I am most curious about as there is always something I have yet to see with my own eyes. Or simply just sit on a terrace and watch the city go about about its day. The energy, the city itself, is like no other. And it does seem to breathe new life, excite new ideas, and bring them to the forefront for my attention to seize. And that is why I was so longing to get to Paris. Now, my recent trip, as many of you know, um, found me traveling with my mother, Um, who I invited to join me as I wanted to get my feet back on the terra firma of both France and Britain, as that is what inspires so much of the content on my blog and this podcast. And so I knew I probably couldn't stay long in either, but I wanted to again just get a taste. And that's exactly what we did. It was about a nine to 10 day trip. And she had never been. And since it had been a three year hiatus, nearly three year hiatus, any time over there in either place would have been enough. <laughs> and so as Paris is so special, I decided to just stay in Paris while we were in France and simply give her a taste of what makes the city of light so special as best I could, of course. Seeing so much in the span of just under three days was a bit overwhelming. We exhausted ourselves on the first day, um, but we we figured out a, be- a better and more enjoyable rhythm the second and third day. But each experience on every single day was very special. However, as I mentioned, this is not my first visit to Paris. This was my seventh. And every time I get over there, it solidifies more concretely what I enjoy spending my time doing 
when I visit, no matter how much time I have and what enables me to truly savor, appreciate and revel in any opportunity to be there in person. So that's what this list is. It's inspired by my own experiences over the course of my many visits and maybe some ideas if either you're traveling to Paris for the first time or haven't traveled there for a long time and want to make sure you really savor being there. So just some ideas today. Let's dive right in. Number one is to first simply settle into your vacation rental or your hotel. I think that's huge. Depending on how far you have traveled, how long your flight was just setting your feet firmly into the place where you're going to rest your head, where you're going to start and end your days. That's kind of going to be your center and grounding point is going to bring a calm that will allow you to fully be able to savor whatever you choose to do. Once you step outside that door, we have the opportunity to stay in a vacation rental from Paris. Perfect. And it was absolute luxury. It was ideally located. It gave us each our own bedroom and bathroom. And it made all the difference. Because for my mom, it softened the culture shock. She was so excited to be there. But it happens just because the brain has a lot to adjust to, especially since she didn't know the language at all. Um, It was a lot of information coming at her. And so when she knew she had this apartment to come home to every single day, it gave her a lot of peace. And me too, because simply wanting to be my best with her and simply wanting to not miss a moment when I was outside those doors, I was able to fully rest at this apartment. And it's in the seventh arrondissement. It's called the St. Julien. And I've linked to this one specifically. It comprises of two full bedrooms, two bathrooms, a large living room, and a well-stocked kitchen with beautiful views, just one block from the Champs de Mars, um, so the Eiffel Tower. And I will write a detailed post full of pictures that will be shared later this week. I highly recommend working with um, this company. I've stayed in their places in London as well, and each time, absolute comfort. I sleep so well. Every little detail is paid attention to. And in fact, listeners may remember that in episode 309, the owner of Paris Perfect, Madeline Byrne, joined me for a detailed conversation of all the attention they put into remodeling these apartments they own in Paris, as well as London and in Italy. So it is with great confidence and recommendation that I encourage you to check out Paris Perfect. So settle in, unpack your bags, put them in the, you know, the the chest of drawers or the cupboard drawers, um, the dresser drawers, really just make yourself at home. For me, again, that gives my mind the ability to be fully present in whatever I choose to do. Number two, so we're just kind of easing our way into the visit. So we first settle in. Number two is to peruse the neighborhood or the arrondissement, boulangeries, and be curious to visit multiple ones, a different one perhaps each morning and or afternoon. And again, you may have been traveling quite a bit to the city. You may know your arrondissements very well. So you may know exactly the boulangerie you want to go to because there is a difference um, in the baguettes, in the, um, the, the croissants, and Every morning we were there, we had a croissant and I went to four different boulangeries each morning um, and we would split the croissant and try and compare. All of them were amazing, but there was a distinct difference in a few of them. But why I say to do this is visiting a boulangerie in the morning is de rigueur. It's what you know you go do for the household, whether it's to get a baguette, which usually is just to go get a baguette. And then on the weekends, it's typically a croissant or croissants or pain au chocolat as the case may be. So the special treats are on the weekend and the baguette is throughout the week, whether afternoon, morning or both. And it just, it's a simple thing to do. It costs often less than two euros to get a baguette. And it allows you to just explore where you are and get a lay of the land. And it's fun to be up early in the morning as places are opening up and the city comes to life. That's something I savor when I'm there each time. Number three is to begin the day with a fresh baguette or croissant or pain au chocolat. And this goes along, obviously, with the number two, which is finding these boulangeries. We found La Notre, which is just around the corner from Rue Claire. Wonderful croissants. And we just 
would bring them back to the apartment, sit down with a cup of tea or a glass of orange juice, and listen to Paris wake up, open up the French windows, plan our day, and it was quite special. Again, something very simple, but something that we don't do here in the States. It's not part of the culture. So we were really savoring this everyday pastry, I guess you could say, or bite of bread to start the day off well. Number four is to schedule a late lunch at a cafe or brasserie to follow a morning visit to a museum or any shops that you are curious to see. I say this because the Parisians usually eat a little, little bit later lunch. So when we went out to lunch, we had reservations, I think at 1.30 at a brasserie in the first arrondissement. And we weren't one of the first ones there. We were um, maybe the sixth or seventh one there. But within a 30 minute window, the whole place was packed. And so between two and we didn't leave until maybe 3.30, um, it was just buzzing. And so you're going to experience more energy. You're going to experience more of everyday life in Paris. And you also give yourself a reprieve or a break after having probably been on your feet for a while or taken in a lot of information at a museum or, you know, checked out a few shops. Maybe you didn't buy anything, but maybe there's a few things on your mind and this gives you some time to process all that. I actually really liked doing this instead of going out to a big dinner. So not every day would I have a big uh, lunch, but we did it. We had a full lunch on one particular day, um, three course meal, maybe four course meal. No, we did. We didn't have dessert, so we did have a three course meal, and we did dessert later that evening. But we had a very light dinner that night, and it's just a way to mix up the day a bit, slow down take it all in and not be going, going, going all the time. So that's number four. Schedule a late lunch at a cafe or brasserie. Number five is to spend time in the morning, afternoon, or evening at one of the many gardens or jardins. As many of you well know, there are many parks that are well known throughout the city or gardens throughout the city. You have the Tuileries, you have Luxembourg, you have the Trocadero, you have the gardens at the Palais Royal, which is one of my favorites. But so do a lot of other people. They love them. And especially on the most beautiful, you know, first few days of the year, everybody's going to be out and about in these. And I understand it. And that's fun too. So everyone has different preferences as to the crowds they want to be around. And I recommend checking all of those out as well. But don't forget that there are many other parks to see in Paris. And I have a list and I've linked to all of these on the show notes. You have in the 19th arrondissement, the Parc des Bouchemont. And this is quite a large park, um, again, on the periphery of the city. You have in the 8th arrondissement, Parc Mansou, in the 14th arrondissement, Parc Mansours, and in the 12th, you have Parc Flora, Floral de Paris, and closer to the heart of the city, um, you have Le Jardin des Plans, and I enjoy that particular park um, just because it has personal memories for me. But then you can also go to the Parc de Bellevue in the 20th and if you want a more modern park, there is one that's right along the Seine and it's in the 15th and it's the Parc André Citrion. And I've linked to all of these. So if you are someone who's already explored the other well-known ones, maybe pick one of these if you have a short visit to go and check out. You might find a new special place to collect your thoughts, sit in the sunshine or the shade, take a picnic and relax. We checked out the Tuileries and I just had never been to the Tuileries in the springtime during spring and um, it just didn't disappoint and I have a picture, two pictures on the show notes of the Tuileries with the trees in full brilliant fuchsia pink that you might want to check out. I've also shared a detailed video of our entire walk through the park and I shared that in this month's A Cup of Moments. Number six and I think you're probably kind of getting the vibe for this um, recommendation is don't schedule too much. Don't, don't jam pack your day with all sorts of have to's. Just let yourself flow with your energy through the day. And I know 
a lot of you will be traveling with other people. But I think for me, this has been the best advice. I always usually have at least one thing that I want to check out, whether it's a restaurant, a brocant, a shop, a museum exhibit. I always usually have something. And I have learned from my past mistakes, and I did make some of those mistakes still on this trip, of scheduling too much. Especially if you are someone who likes to wander about the city, flannering, then not scheduling too much sets you free to follow your curiosities, your taste buds, the sights, whatever grabs your attention. So that's number six. Be cautious about scheduling too much. Number seven is find a lesser known to tourists restaurant, but a well-known one most likely in your arrondissement and dine there for dinner. So without a doubt, in every arrondissement, there are more than a few local favorite restaurants. Explore them, whether in person as you're walking around, online, from your trusted sources, um, and then make reservations because most likely they require reservations and check it out. We went to a restaurant that actually opened up just in October, Cafe Lignac, um, L-I-G-N-A-C, that was just literally a block away from our vacation rental. And we had delicious meals. We ate there twice and it was fun to be around the locals. It was fun to be close to talking or close enough to really talk with the waiters and waitresses. And um, it, it gave a feeling of not being a tourist as much as that's possible. But it also, for me, I found it relaxing because I find that if you go to a really popular restaurant that's known for being a tourist site, they sometimes have an American or English menu. And it differs from the French menu, number one. Number two, the waiters or waitresses tend to talk all English to you, which I get and I understand that's so much easier for them because my broken French um, would be hard to try to understand. But if you really want to settle into that feeling of not being a tourist and engaging with the city as best you possibly can, try to find that restaurant in your arrondissement that the locals like to frequent. That's number seven. Number eight has to do with this one as well. When you're at that restaurant, ask them before you place your order, and it's not going to be on the menu, what the plat du jour is, the, the plate of the day. Um, and it'll be seasonal. It'll often be less expensive than the most lovely items on the menu and just as good. Um, and often the waiter or waitresses want you to try it because it's something they're excited about. Anyway, I've included a picture of the plat du jour that I enjoyed at Cafe Lignac. It was a white fish on top of carrot puree with butter and white wine sauce. And it was absolutely delicious. So that's number eight. Choose to order the plat du jour. Number nine is visit a brocante on Saturday or Sunday. So a brocante is similar to kind of a, 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 a hybrid between a flea market and an antique um, market because you're going to have both. And I have gone, as I've shared a couple years ago, to the most famous one that's in the 18th arrondissement, Marché aux Pousses de Seon. And I highly recommend going there. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. I wrote a detailed post sharing 11 tips for visiting this um, brocante um, and marché. And it's only open Saturday through Monday, Saturday and Sundays being the best days to go. Um, but Monday, I've never been there on Monday, but Monday is just going to be a little quieter. Some of the vendors may not be open, but most of them are. But the one that I'm really curious to visit the next time I'm in Paris, and this one is more central Paris, very close to the 7th arrondissement where we were. We just did not have time to go there because we were leaving on Saturday. And it's only open Saturdays and Sundays, but it begins at 7 a.m. and runs through 2 in the afternoon. And it's Marché aux Pousses de la Peau de Vanve. And again, because it's so central and because it's not as well known as the previous one I just mentioned, you're going to, again, be in less of a touristy side. Definitely visit a brocante. 
You may never, you may not purchase a thing, but I have a feeling you're going to find things that catch your eye, catch your attention. And these are real treasures to bring home. So check out um, a brocante when you're in the city of Paris on the weekend. And then you also have Les Pousses de Montreux in the 20th, which is more of a local favorite, has fewer tourists because few of them know, few of us know about it. And um, there are, you know, it's been said that this one also it requires more time to get through um, the junk, but there are still a lot of treasures to be found. And I have included all of these listed because I know my French is not at all close to wonderful. Um, I've included all three of these under number nine on the show notes. So all three of those brocantes. And this one is opened on Monday. Excuse me. This one is also open on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. All right. Moving on to number 10. Number 10. Let's talk about food for a second. Number 10 is to visit a chocolatier in the afternoon and treat yourself. There are all sorts of chocolate shops in France. And as soon as I mention one and forget another, you know, I I don't want to compare them. There's just so many good ones. I'll share the one we visited while we were there on our trip because I had never heard of this shop. And there are a handful of, of them around the city and you can order them online. Their chocolate, their praline chocolate truffles are absolutely out of this world. Um, this one was called Alame de Famille, and it um, has many locations. As I said, we went into their location on the Rue Claire in the 7th, and it was all decked out with Easter eggs and Easter chickens and bunnies and <laughs> all sorts of things. But the chocolate was chocolate, and it was good chocolate, and it was so yummy. So definitely, you know, find a favorite chocolate shop one afternoon and go purchase some chocolates and just um, delight in the fact that there's so many good chocolate shops around you and something definitely worth savoring and something to remind yourself to savor if you incorporate that ritual when you come home, as I know many of you do and I do as well. Um, I enjoy one truffle in the evening if I haven't partaken in dessert. And it is a reminder to slow down, end the day, being fully present and appreciative and aware of what all unfolded and and just to bring closure to that day and in a meaningful way. Simple. So that's number 10. Number 11 is find the weekly marché or market, like farmer's market in your arrondissement and visit during the open hours. So every arrondissement has a market and it's open at least one day every week, sometimes two, often will be on the weekend and then one during the weekdays. But figure out when yours is open or one that you can get to is open that you want to check out. If you are going to be picking some items up, take your market tote or a trolley. Even if you're not, simply go and stroll, wander. And if you're going to bring some things home, whether it's to nibble on or if you're going to cook, if you have a vacation rental, you know, take your time doing so. I always like to stroll all the way down just once without buying anything and then making my way back and making decisions, which are usually not easy to make because there's a lot of great choices. But just spend time gazing at all that is available because often it's it's a seasonal feast of, of you know what the farmers are bringing in. And it's a treat for your senses and just fun to explore. So that's something that'll help to savor being not only in Paris, but in France. Number 12 is, and I've alluded to, the, to this a little bit um, earlier in our episode, but is to find a seat at a cafe inside or on the terrace, sip a chocolat chaud or a French tea or a cafe au lait and lose track of time. You need not be with anybody or you might be with somebody. It doesn't matter. Maybe you'll read a book. Maybe you write in your journal. Maybe you do absolutely nothing and just take it all in. But make time to do this. There's so many cafes um, around. And uh, go into the one that draws your attention. So that's number 12. Number 13 is to enjoy an omelet for lunch or dinner. Yep. Eggs very rarely are enjoyed for breakfast in France. It's typical to have them part of your, to be part of your lunch or dinner. And oh my gosh, the simplest thing it seems, but the most lovely, seemingly decadent, and has so few ingredients. It's just so wonderful. I recently had an omelet at a cafe. We were sitting on Rue Claire on the Terrace, and I 
had they had to have at least three eggs in that omelet, maybe four, but I think three had herbs in it. Oh, so good. So good. Had that for lunch and um, I cannot recommend something more off the top of my head that will not disappoint. <laughs> the French know how to make their omelets. And again, all in all, and they don't put anything in it. You just need eggs, butter, salt, and um, like this one had herbs. And that's it. That's really all that's in there. Number 14, purchase a ticket to visit a limited time only art exhibit. One thing that I learned on this trip was that all of the more well-known museums, so the Louvre, the Musée d'Orsay, you're going to have to place or order your tickets to visit these places days in advance. Um, we did not purchase tickets for the Louvre before we went. My mom had never been to the Louvre and I said, oh, we got to get you to the Louvre. And I hadn't been to the Louvre for about 20 years. I usually go to other museums when I'm there. And um, it was a week out. You would have had to have scheduled your ticket for at least a week out. So if you are going to Paris, and partly this is because of the COVID regulations and limiting people inside, um, but you're still going to see a lot of people inside, but at least they're limiting it a little bit more. You're going to want to get online and order those tickets. You're paying the same price. It's nothing different. It's just you're confirming that you can go, that you can get in, and you're not going to have to wait in line. Um, there might be a line because everyone has a ticket, but yeah, that's been a shift since um, the pre-pandemic days. Um, that was new to me. So if you can, before your trip, explore online of different limited time exhibits that are in these well-known museums or lesser known museums, but this, within those, they have limited time exhibits that you want to go check out and purchase a ticket. Now, what we did... There was, there is a limited time exhibit at the Lingerie right now for Impressionist painters specifically about the inspiration of the water lilies, Monet's water lilies. But um, a lot of different Impressionist works have been brought in from other museums, including the one right across the river, Musée d'Orsay, but also there's some from Dallas, there's some from other places in Europe that, that are not going to be there for longer than the exhibit lasts. And this exhibit lasts through July 11th. So I wanted to see Monet's water lilies as it was because I had never been to the museum. But then when that limited time exhibit was part of it, I said, ooh, this is where we're going to go. And it did not disappoint. I have a video of the lingerie visit in um, this month's A Cup of Moments if you want to check that out. Anytime you visit a museum, everyone does it their own way. But to savor it, is to just let your eye guide you. Refrain from looking at your watch. Try to put out of your mind how many people are in the museum and just really focus on the art that grabs your attention. Let yourself sit with it, gaze it, gaze at it. Even if you don't know why it's grabbing your attention, let yourself just be surrounded and in the, and in the company of the work that has brought you to this space. Yeah, you never know how art's going to speak to you, but you first have to present yourself and put it, put yourself in the space with it. So that's number 14. Purchase a ticket to, a, to visit a limited time only art gallery, art exhibit. Number 15 is to, maybe it's during a paro time, maybe it's to enjoy a pair of teeth at your vacation rental, but I would encourage you to go out to a cafe or a brasserie pre-dinner or maybe as your first course and pair a glass of champagne with a serving of fresh oysters. It is so simple, so refreshing, so just absolutely decadent, yet it doesn't really feel super decadent. They pair so beautifully together. And especially since you're probably getting oysters from the Brittany coast or up in Normandy, um, they're very fresh. So yeah, I, I, this is something that I've, I've done before here in the States, but my mom and I also did this for our first lunch out in Paris. And it was, it was a great way to set the tone, to settle in and enjoy the rest of the meal and slow the pace of the meal down. So this is a list of just a handful, so 15 things that I have found that have, that have enabled me to really savor Paris. And again, this is drawn from what I have found to deepen the moments 
of pleasure in Paris, you will no doubt have those simple pleasures and luxuries that are unique to you that take your breath away. So just honor what speaks to you, follow your curiosities and and let go of doing what you think you have to do when you're in Paris or at any travel destination for that matter. And follow your curiosity. The trip and the memories of the trip will be all the more richer, vivid and life lifting when you honor what is piquing your interest. I would love to hear other ways that you savor the city of light. If you too, if something popped into your mind and you want to share with listeners or readers, please do share in the comment section. Whenever you get back to Paris or get to see Paris for the first time, I hope you have a most wonderful time. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode and stay tuned. I have technically number 16 is a petite plaisir. So please do stay tuned. A simple recipe that is sharing a classic Parisian petite plaisir. I'll be right back. So this week's Petit Plaisir is the Simple Luxurious Life's classic chocolate show Parisian cafe inspired. I will just say it, the best hot chocolate is a chocolate show. So in other words, French hot chocolate. The French just seem to do it best. I'm sure the Belgians do it even better because they know chocolate. But I've never been to Belgium, but definitely look forward to doing so. And when I do, chocolate is on my list (laughs) to check out. But when it comes to chocolate show, the French do it very, very well. And there really isn't anything like it. And it has to do with the high quality of chocolate that is used. And it's really quite simple to make. Once you have sipped a chocolate show while resting your feet at a cafe in Paris, you slow down, you begin to sip gradually so as to make the cup of chocolate goodness last as long as possible. It is a luxury and a pleasure and you can make your very own at home. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. Over the years, if you've been a listener for a long time or a reader for a while of the blog, you know that I have shared a couple of recipes for chocolate show. And with each recipe, they resemble more and more the taste equivalent to memories traveling in Paris that I have had, either experiencing a breakfast moment at Angelina's on Rue Rivoli, or just recently at a cafe on Rue Claire while sitting on the terrace watching the many people and pets pass by on an unusually sunny and warm day in early April. In fact, the most recent recipe I shared prior to this one today was on the holiday episode of my cooking show, The Simply Luxurious Kitchen. And it was in season three. There were three recipes that I shared and the recipe for chocolate show was included. Now I shared the more decadent version, which I do include in this recipe as an option, but you do not need to include this one ingredient that just takes it up a notch for decadence. And that is to include heavy cream. And it is amazing. (laughs) I've included a picture of it below. And I'm not talking about the whipped cream you put on top. I'm talking about the heavy whipped cream you put in the chocolate with the milk. Um, But today, what I'd like to do for everyday enjoyment is to share with you the recipe sans cream. So it's just going to be whole milk and it will just still be as decadent and it will transport you to Paris tout de suite. Whether made and enjoyed on a snowy day here in Bend when I have just returned home from skiing or snowshoeing on the mountain with my pups, or as it was most recently a day following returning home from a trip to France and England, finding myself exhausted and gray and rainy weather outside, that cup of chocolat chaud suited the cozy mood just perfectly. The recipe will take you fewer than seven minutes and you will be sipping a cup of this simple yet decadent French treat, warming your hands and calming your being. I'm going to walk you through it here verbally, but the recipe is on the blog in the show notes. So visit the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 328. And you can also find the recipe on the blog under recipes when you click on recipes on the main menu, then click on drinks. I've also included it in the dessert category as well. So there are all sorts of places you can find this on the Simply Luxurious Life blog. So the prep time is just a matter of chopping up the chocolate. And you want three ounces of high quality dark chocolate or whatever is your favorite type of chocolate. The higher the cacao count, the better. 
And while I like dark chocolate, it is still very good and it doesn't have the sweet in it. This is going to serve two people um, really nice cups of chocolate show or three servings in small, smaller cups. So you chop up the chocolate, just roughly, nothing small or fancy because you're going to melt it. And in a small saucepan, pour two cups of whole fat milk over medium heat. Don't go any higher than medium. Put the chocolate in that you've just chopped up. Add one teaspoon sugar and one tablespoon of unsweetened cocoa powder. Top quality again. Again, that's it. Mix it up using a whisk. It doesn't have to be constantly mixing or whisking, but you want to check on it periodically and regularly. As soon as it's all melted, don't bring it to a boil unless you want it to get thicker. That's all you need. And then enjoy. How you make it decadent is you add a third of a cup of heavy whipping cream to the milk and the chocolate mixture. And this will also make it thicker. So the longer you cook it with the whipping cream, the thicker it will get. So just keep that in mind. So there's just different viscosities depending on what you want you could do but you really don't need the heavy whipping cream it is going to be decadent enough with just the whole milk and that's it that's how simple it is so fewer than five ingredients just just four and you've got chocolate show paris cafe inspired and i have a picture of the one i recently made um, upon returning from my trip home i was wasn't entirely feeling 100 percent, and so there was one day um, I think day four after I got back that Norman and I just kind of snuggled on the sofa and relaxed and I made a cup of chocolate show and it rained that day and it was just quite special actually. So there's a picture of it on the show notes if you want to check that out. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each episode where I'll recommend a book, a film, a show, a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. And again, you can find the recipe on the show notes, the simplyluxuriouslive.com slash podcast 328. I want to take a minute before we wrap up today to send a big thank you to a listener in Minnesota. Her handle is Minnesota Luxury Living, and she wrote a, a very kind review, gave us five stars, a bright star in my day, she writes. Shannon Ables is producing content that brightens every day for me. Her podcast is so intelligently put together that I feel lifted up after each airing, and like I want to raise the bar on my own life. Listening to Shannon is like sharing some time with a real friend, a friend who you not only admire, but also someone who wants the best for you. I find that when I take her suggestions of books, movies, or life experiences, I am always glad I did. For anyone who is looking to enjoy simple sophistication in all of life, look no further. Thank you so much for this very generous and thoughtfully specific review. I, I really do appreciate your specificity, and um, I'm grateful that you enjoy the show. Good news coming your way, listeners. There are two new episodes coming up in May instead of our regular two because British Week is coming up and begins on the 15th of May, running through the 22nd of May. There will be two episodes that week on the 16th and then one later in the week. I haven't figured out the day yet. Most likely it'll be a Thursday, but it might be the 21st also. But you will have at least two new episodes that week. They will be British inspired and focused. So Anglophiles, tune in. Today was for the Francophiles, most definitely, and I hope you enjoyed this show. I'm excited to share that with the release of the audiobook of The Road de la Papillon, Daily Meditations on True Contentment, it reached a number one ranking for new releases in France travel. So if you're tuning in, you love to travel to France, this book might be something you want to check out, especially if you like listening to books. It's available on Audible, but it's also available in hardback, paperback, and in ebook format. And every single entry throughout the entire year shares a petit plaisir, something that was inspired from this podcast show. I want to thank everyone who has already purchased the book in whatever form you chose and thank you also for leaving the positive rankings and reviews that you have. It has made a tremendous difference and I am truly touched. The virtual book signing went so wonderfully well last week and you can watch the version that we recorded of that virtual talk hosted by Roundabout Books, a local bookshop here in Bend, Oregon. I will include a link to it on the show notes, but you can also find it on this last Friday's This and That and my Twitter feed. Be sure to explore becoming a top tier member of the Simply Luxurious Live because so much more content is available to you. And just most recently, A Cup of Moments was shared yesterday, the monthly A Cup of Moment video chat, 
where I share video tours that are exclusively shared with top tier members of the Simply Luxurious Life community. And it was over an hour chat. I take you through the entire trip and give you hints and peeks as well of upcoming content that will be shared. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful first week of May. Bon journée. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, visit the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life, with the shortened URL, tsll.co. For more in-depth exploration of how to cultivate your own unique Simply Luxurious Life, be sure to pick up my first two books. Each are available in hardback, paperback, ebook, and at Audible for audio listening. The first is titled Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life and the second Living the Simply Luxurious Life. And look for a third book to be released in the spring of 2022. Readers can now join the more intimate Simply Luxurious Life international community by becoming members of the blog, which provides ad-free unlimited reading and access to exclusive content such as each month's A Cup of Moments video chat, tours of my home, Le Papillon, the regular monthly post, What Made Me Smile, and Saturday Ponderings, as well as the opportunity to enter all of the giveaways during French and British weeks. To stay caught up on all things Simply Luxurious, the podcast, blog post, and the cooking show, as well as receive exclusive news and an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart your new month, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's free monthly newsletter, which arrives on the last day of each month. And there's a weekly newsletter, a favorite of listeners and readers, which is also free and arrives each Friday to keep you caught up on the recent weekly posts on the blog. Enjoy with a hot cup of tea or a cup of morning coffee and stay in the know about all things Simply Luxurious. Thank you for tuning in today and look for two new episodes of this podcast each month on the first and third Monday. To be alerted to new episodes and when they become available, follow on Instagram, the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, and only the news about this show will be shared. Until next time, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.